Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports and today we're taking a look at one of Ultra's thickest road running shoes. It's the Via Olympus 2. We're also going to compare it to last year's version, version 1, and the Ultra Torin 7. Let's run with that. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Even though the Ultra Via Olympus 2 looks very similar compared to last year, it feels completely different. They made some key updates in the midsole and upper to really improve this particular model. And then of course, we also have the Ultra Torin 7. This is kind of their classic neutral, moderately cushioned road running shoe. And honestly, your shoes are just getting thicker and thicker. So this used to be kind of considered a max cushion shoe. And uh, now this, I guess, is the true max cushion shoe. And it's a max cushion neutral road running option. So. If you're someone who likes a torrent but wants a little bit more cushion, that's where the Ultra Via Olympus comes in. And while this is classified as a neutral option, I will say it is quite stable. If you're not familiar with Ultra running shoes, they do things a little bit differently compared to most brands. The first thing is most of their running shoes have a zero millimeter heel to toe drop where the heel is level with the forefoot. Now, I say most of the running shoes because this year they came out with their first option that does not have a zero millimeter drop. And I'll put that on the screen so you can see exactly what that is. But for a majority of their shoes, zero millimeter heel to toe drop, which means your heel is level with your forefoot. The next thing that Ultra does is they have a really wide toe box, gives your toes some space to sprawl out. I am personally a big fan of this. And they have three different foot shapes as they call it. They have a slim, found on their faster race day shoes, their standard, which is what we see here on the Torin 7, and then their original foot shape, which is what we see here on the Via Olympus 2, their widest foot shape. So you can kind of tailor it to exactly what you need and how much room you really want in the toe box based off of Ultra's different and various foot shapes. As far as the stats go, the V Olympus 1 cost $170, and I was actually surprised to see it get $5 cheaper this year, now $165, and then the Torin 7 comes in at $150. We do gain a little bit of weight this year. The V Olympus 2 weighs 11.4 ounces, putting it on the heavier side of things, and this is four tenths of an ounce heavier compared to the first edition, which weighed 11 ounces. Now comparing this to the Torin, the Torin comes in at 9.8. So you are going to have just a slightly heavier daily trainer here again at 11.4 ounces. However, the stack height remains exactly the same with 33 millimeters in the heel, 33 in the forefoot for again, that classic zero millimeter ultra drop. Now the Torin just has three less millimeters of stack height with 30 in the heel, 30 in the forefoot, but I will say the Via Olympus line has a lot more volume to the midsole. It just feels larger overall, even though it only has three more millimeters of height. Moving on to the upper, Ultra made some minor adjustments. The material is still a very familiar engineered mesh, average beatability, about the same as the Via Olympus one. However, they did upgrade the toe guard plastic, has a little bit more rigidity to it, kind of gives the silhouette a little bit more structure, which I appreciate. It's still that original foot shape, which is their widest toe box. I absolutely love this. It's incredible. If you've never tried a wide toe box shoe like a Topo or Ultra, I highly suggest you do. And for me, it just kind of makes every other shoe feel a little bit narrow. So really a big fan of these wide toe boxes. The other thing is the tongue. It's about the same as last year, non-gusseted. It got the job done. However, the lacing system does not have these kind of customizable interaction points across the midfoot, which I didn't use on the V Olympus one. So to see them disappear wasn't that big of an issue. It's kind of a pain to unlace these and get them kind of just right to really just pull the laces closer together and it works. So I think getting rid of that was, was fine. It didn't really bother me. And then the big thing for me though, was the heel counter. They made it a more V shaped heel counter compared to last year, or as more of a U shape. And now this gives you a little bit more of a tight fit around your heel. So I had less heel lift compared to the V Olympus one, which was an issue for me. So overall the fit felt somewhat similar with the heel counter being much better, giving me just overall better lockdown. And if we compare that to the Torin 7, the Torin 7 has the standard foot shape. So a slightly more narrow toe box, although plenty of room compared to most other running shoes. I do like the original foot shape. It just feels absolutely luxurious. And then this has a knit like upper, although it has this, these kind of strategic breathability zones and I thought the breathability is pretty comparable to the Via Olympus 2, so not that much of a drop off. The tongue is much thinner. You have a little bit less padding. So if you do like some comfort there, I think that's going to be a win for the Via Olympus. And then the heel counter was, was good. It's just not as good as the more V-shaped Via Olympus 2 heel counter. I just like the lockdown and fit on this option better than the Torrent 7. So Torrent 7 has a knit upper breathability, is decent tongues, a little bit thinner. 
and it just has a little bit less of an aggressive heel counter compared to the Via Olympus 2, at least in my opinion. And now for the midsoles, which are quite interesting because on paper, all three foams are labeled as Ego Max. And even though they're, I guess, technically labeled as the same kind of foam, they feel completely different. And a good example of that is the Via Olympus 1. When I saw this on paper last year, I was super excited. I tried things like the Paradigm 6. I loved Ego Max. And I was like, oh, this is going to be ultra thick as shoe. It's going to be incredibly soft and bouncy. And then I got it. And this was one of the firmest shoes I tried last year. So a really interesting kind of choice by Ultra to make the Via Olympus 1 just incredibly firm. It's also incredibly stiff and rigid. This thing does not want to bend, which helps you really notice that rocker geometry. And I will say, because this is more firm and rigid compared to the Via Olympus 2, you notice that rocker geometry a bit more. I think it's a little bit more aggressive just because of the, I guess, the natural property of this shoe being more rigid. So I was kind of surprised last year when I tried this, and I think a lot of people were too. We were kind of hoping for a more plush Ultra Max cushion shoe. And that is what the V Olympus 2 is. This feels much softer, has a lot more compression to it. And when I first stepped into this shoe, I was like, ah, oh, this is what I was hoping for out of this particular line. And the best way I can describe it is if you've tried the Torrin 7, it feels very similar to this kind of Ego Max. Has a lot of squish to it, not a whole lot of bounce and pop, but is rather soft and noticeably softer compared to uh, the Torn 7, just because the midsole here is so much larger. It's most notable in the heel, just because if you kind of line these two shoes up, you'll notice that the V Olympus heel is significantly larger compared to the Torrent 7 heel. The forefoots are a little bit closer. So the Ego Max foam is a lot more like the Torrent 7 Ego Max. It has a lot of softness and squish to it, not a ton of energy return, again, at least in my opinion, but is a noticeable improvement compared to the first V Olympus. Now, because the V Olympus 2 got softer, it's a little bit less stable. Yes, this is classified as a neutral shoe, but if you take a look at this thing, it is incredibly wide. You have tons of foam on the medial side, lateral side, and it just works as a very stable neutral option. It's less stable compared to the V Olympus 1, just because if this was a firmer midsole, so you have less compression, your foot has less likely to go to either side, but I do like the trade-off. I'd rather have this softer midsole compared to the firmer one like we saw last year. The other thing, and I, just, I just touched on this, it's a little bit more flexible and bendable, so you don't notice that rocker geometry as much, but it is significantly more noticeable compared to the Torrent 7, which has a slight rocker, but it just is much more pronounced here on the Via Olympus 2. I do think the Torrent 7 is the more versatile daily training option, works better at those faster paces compared to the Via Olympus, partially because it's lighter and it just has a more condensed setup. The Via Olympus is rather large, a lot more volume to the midsole, and feels slightly clunky. Although I do appreciate that rocker geometry that helps move this large shoe along. And the Via Olympus comes in at 11.4 ounces, which puts it on the heavier side of things, especially when we're taking a look at of all these new Ultra Max Cushion shoes. While I really do like the updates to the midsole here, I will say this version of Ego Max doesn't have a ton of life and pop to it. It's much softer compared to last year, but if you compare it to like uh, Flight Foam Blast Plus on ASIC shoes or Zoom X Foam on Nike shoes, this falls a little bit short in the way of energy return. So I'm hoping on future iterations we get something a little bit more exciting, but I will say this is noticeably more comfortable compared to the first version. I'm just going to keep on harping on that because this one kind of let me down. I was really hoping for the V Olympus 2 last year, if that makes any sense. So if you've really tried the Torn 7 and felt this version of Ego Max, it feels very similar here, just with more underfoot. Uh, just giving you a ton of cushion. Moving on to the outsole, it's the same exact setup as last year. And I find that funny because you have these lines here, which is called Ultra's Interflex technology. It's supposed to work with the bones and tendons in your feet. And it's just interesting because the midsole is so thick that I really don't think these sculpted lines really do too much. And I just wasn't able to feel it. Same thing goes with the Torn 7. You have those lines there and it really doesn't make too much of a difference for me. The traction pattern, rather smooth and did a decent job. You have a moderate amount of rubber coverage, a little bit less compared to the Torin. Ultra finally has a true Ultra Max cushion shoe here with the V Olympus 2, which puts it in the same space as like the Hoka Bondi, the A6 Nimbus, or the New Balance More V4. This shoe is significantly softer and more enjoyable compared to last year, and I'm happy to see they fixed the heel counter, which gives it an improved lockdown. My only major complaints are I wish, you know, the foam had a little bit more pop and life to it. And it is rather heavy at 11.4 ounces, which I think makes the Torrent 7 the more versatile, faster daily training option. However, if someone is on their feet all day or just needs a ton of cushion for the push-in on your long runs, 
I think the Via Olympus II really shines through, and I'm happy to see they really made the improvements necessary to make this an enjoyable Ultra Max Cushion daily trainer. Well, that concludes the review. Let me know down in the comments which Ultra Shoe you are looking forward to trying. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.